In today's video, we discuss the top 10 foods that will cripple your health. And remember to stay until number 10, because this is the one that I believe is the worst of the worst. And very quickly, before I get to the list, I want to caveat and say that none of the 10 worst foods are obviously gonna kill you by eating them occasionally. It's all about the context of your diet. Health is decimated over a prolonged period of time, which for some people could be a few months or even a few years, and for others, it may be decades. And with that out of the way, to the list. Number one is foods with a high salt content. So salt is added to many different supermarket foods, such as ready meals, sauces, spreads, crisp cakes, and everything in between. Salt is a preservative added to foods because it helps to reduce the water activity of those foods, and as such, it helps to create an environment resistant to spoilage, and it also helps to create an environment that is inhospitable for pathogens to thrive. So this is all very good, but the problem with salt is that when you eat too much of it, it increases blood pressure, and as a result, you get increased risk for things like heart disease and heart attacks, strokes, heart enlargement, certain autoimmune diseases, kidney problems, and in rarer situations, also things like stomach cancer. If you're an adult, then the current guidelines say that you should limit your salt intake to less than five to six grams of salt per day, which is the equivalent to one teaspoon. And for children between one to three, they should eat no more than two grams of salt per day. Children between four and six, no more than three grams per day children between seven to 10, no more than five grams per day, and teenagers and adults less than that six grams per day. Babies should obviously not consume too much salt as their kidneys are not fully developed to process it. According to the World Health Organization, the average person in the Western world currently consumes around nine to 12 grams per day. They and other health organizations around the world have identified salt reduction in a diet as one of the most cost-effective measures countries can take to improve population health outcomes. The World Health Organization also estimates that around two and a half million deaths per year could be prevented if global salt consumption was reduced to the recommended levels. Number two is fried foods. So many supermarket foods, and even those produced at home, are fried in oils that are rich in omega-6 that can be incredibly inflammatory in your body. Some common examples include canola, soybean, cottonseed, corn, sesame, sunflower, safflower, grapeseed, and also rice bran. But it's not just the inflammatory component that makes fried foods problematic in your body. Adding these oils to the foods can significantly increase the amount of calories that you are consuming. So for example, eat 100 grams of potatoes and you will be getting around 93 calories. Eat the same amount in the form of French fries that have had oils added and those calories go up to around 319 calories and around 17 grams of fat. Fried foods also contain more of the harmful compound called acrylamide. This is a toxic substance that forms in foods that are cooked and fried at high temperatures. It is formed when a chemical reaction occurs between sugars and the amino acid asparagine. The net negative consequence of eating these types of foods on a regular basis is an increased risk of heart disease, an increased risk of diabetes, an increased risk of cancer, and generally an increased risk of all-cause mortality. Number three is baked goods, and for the purposes of this video, I will define baked goods as foods that are made from highly processed refined carbohydrates, white flours, sugars, and also oils. And this obviously includes breads, cakes, cookies, crisps, crackers, and many, many more. These types of foods not only contain a lot of sugars, oils, and refined flours, but they also tend to contain a lot of additives and preservatives that can cause issues in your body. So for example, while MSG, which is a flavor enhancer, is approved by many health organizations around the world, it is often part of the problem in causing people to overeat, and this is why many food companies add it to their products, so that you will obviously buy more of these foods. A lot of baked foods are heavily implicated in increasing risk factors around many different types of diseases and autoimmune problems, as well as depression and also dementia. Some of the worst baked foods today are those containing trans fats, and while banned in many parts of the world, they still unbelievably exist on the shelves in many Western countries. Number four is fizzy drinks and fruit juices. Fizzy drinks and fruit juices often contain a copious amount of sugar and added sugars, and also many undesirable additives and preservatives. A single can of pop can contain upwards of 30 grams of free sugars, which is around seven teaspoon, which is your daily recommended upper limit, and that is in just one drink. Drink these types of drinks on a regular basis, and you are at an increased risk of weight gain due to leptin resistance. Leptin is a hormone produced in your fat cells, and it helps regulate the calories that you eat and burn. 
Soft drinks also put you at an increased risk for developing fatty liver, as many of these sugars can be stored as fat in the liver. For many, these increased sugars will also translate into unhealthy belly visceral fat, which also increases your risk for many different types of diseases. Growing evidence is also showing that those who regularly consume fizzy drinks and also fruit juices are much more susceptible to insulin resistance problems and the subsequent diabetes potential complications. Basically, if you are regularly consuming in these types of beverages, then you are increasing your risk factors for many of our leading killers. Number five, and I don't think it's any surprise for any of you, that processed refined meats are on this list. Processed meats are meats that have been preserved by smoking, curing, or adding chemical preservatives. Some of the worst around are deli meats, hot dogs, and also bacon. There are many, many reasons that these types of foods have been linked to cancer and other diseases, but the main three ones are, number one, these types of foods contain a lot of heme iron, which is a pigment mainly found in red meat. Number two, these foods often contain a lot of nitrates and nitrites. And number three, these foods tend to contain a lot of heterocyclic and polycyclic amines that are produced when you cook these foods at high temperatures. These three reasons and many, many others are why in 2015, the World Health Organization listed these foods as carcinogenic. These are foods, and actually I wouldn't even call them foods, that are nothing more than a mixture of waste meat scraps that are blended and packed with chemical preservatives and many different coloring agents. Number six is butter. Now again, I don't think that too many people will believe that butter is a health promoting food, but there are still some people on this planet that will guzzle butter down like it's going out of fashion. While some would argue that butter contains important nutrients such as vitamins A, E and K, and even things like short chain fatty acids, I would always argue that you can't get at these nutrients without taking on board some of the problematic elements of butter. Often butter contains a lot of salt, it is high in calories, and obviously it also contains a lot of undesirable saturated fats that can cause widespread issues in the body if consumed in excess. Generally speaking, around 60 to 70% of butter comes from saturated fats, which have an inflammatory effect in the body, while only 20 to 30% of fats found in butter are from healthier monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats. Number seven is donuts and pancakes. Now look, many of us will enjoy these types of foods as an occasional treat, and that is absolutely fine. But the problem is, is that many people will consume these types of foods on a regular basis. An average donut will contain in excess of 300 calories, with some brands being upwards of 700 calories. And just to put that into context for you, you would need to be on a treadmill for around an hour to burn off those excess calories. And the reason that many people scramble for donuts is they are obviously covered in sugar. Many supermarket bought donuts will contain 20 to 40 grams of sugar in a single portion, which is the equivalent of four to eight teaspoons of sugar. Put that into the body on a regular basis and you can see why these types of foods are gonna cause insulin problems. A single donut also typically contains around 15 to 25 grams of fat, of which around 50% is often derived from saturated fats, such as the inflammatory steric acid. And you would think that donuts are simply sugars and fats, but oh no. These types of foods can often contain 15 to 20 different ingredients, ranging from additives, e-numbers, preservatives, rapeseed oils, and everything in between. Number eight is sugar. Now we all know that non-communicable diseases such as heart disease and cancer are our leading causes of death. The World Health Organization estimates that 73% of the 41 million plus deaths that occur every year could largely be avoided if people modify their poor diets and also increase their physical activity. As the World Health Organization says on its website, free sugars contribute to the overall energy density of diets and higher intakes of free sugars threaten the nutrient quality of the diet by providing significant energy without specific nutrients, leading to unhealthy weight gain and increased risk of obesity. Sugars and free sugars include monounsaccharides and disaccharides added to foods and beverages by the manufacturers, cooks or consumers, and sugars naturally present in honeys, syrups, fruit juices, and fruit juice concentrates. Now I'm sure that most people are aware of some of the potential issues with dairy with high levels of saturated fats, 
the lactose elements which cause lactose intolerance, the hormone issues, and even things like pesticides and antibiotics. These issues are, however, compounded when you add a lot of sweeteners and free sugars into the mix. So for example, just two teaspoons of something like Ben & Jerry's cookie dough ice cream has 235 calories, 13 grams of fat, and a whole host of additives and preservatives. But let's just face it, with these types of ice creams, who is just going to be eating two teaspoons at a time? This whole concoction of dairy hormones and free sugars are why many studies link these foods to elevations in growth hormones in the body that can drive cancer in some people, particularly breast cancer in women, as well as many other diseases such as heart disease and strokes. Number 10 is red meats, particularly those that have been smoked, barbecued, or conventionally raised. This is what I think the most destructive and problematic food on this list is, and that is my opinion. If you have another opinion or a food that is not on this list, then drop it in the comments below. Red meat becomes inherently more damaging in the body when it's smoked or cured, or when it's pumped full of antibiotics and growth hormones. Red meat, like any food, has its pros and cons, but I think those cons start to increase more quickly when humans begin processing the meat a lot more. Again, it's why the World Health Organization in 2015 categorized processed meats as carcinogenic. When you have concentrations of heme iron, IGF-1, high levels of protein, new 5GC and other compounds, and then process the foods to preserve them, and then in some occasions you add them to the pan or barbecue them at high heat, then clearly you are eating nothing more than a toxic mix. Will eating a single bacon sandwich kill you today? Absolutely not. But load the body up with these types of foods over 20, 30, or even 40 years, and the science is very clear to what the potential risk factors are. Anyhow, that's the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed, and remember to look after your body because it's the only place you have to live. And I'll see you next time.